ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا اله غيره ولا رب سواه اول بلا ابتداء دائم بلا انتهاء لا يفنى ولا يبيد ولا يكون الا ما يريد لا تبلغه الاوهام ولا تدركه الافهام ولا يشبهه الانام حي لا يموت قيوم لا ينام ولا ينبغي له ان ينام ذلك بانه على كل شيء قدير وكل شيء اليه فقير وكل امر عليه يسير لا يحتاج الى شيء وليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير هو الله الذي لا اله الا هو عالم الغيب والشهاده هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا اله الا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون والله الخالق البارئ المصور له الاسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والارض وهو العزيز الحكيم واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وامينه على وحيه ومبلغ الناس شرعا ما ترك خيرا الا دل الامه عليه ولا شرا الا حذرها منه فصلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد Indeed, the best of the words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best of the guidance and the only accepted guidance in Islam is the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of the matters are the newly invented matters in Islam. And every newly invented matter in Islam is indeed an innovation. And every innovation will indeed misguide us and every misguidance will take us to one destination. جهنم وساءت مصيرا اعاذنا الله واياكم منها قولوا امين today i'm going to talk about a topic that i spoke very briefly about two days ago at the isha so the brothers that were here at the isha may hear some repetitive points but i will i want to expand on it a little more to expand and for those who are not here to benefit from this topic inshallah and that was the topic of stating how we all need to have the akhlaq of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned in a hadith qala aqrabakum minni manzila ahasinukum akhlaqa that the closest ones to me in jannah on judgment day will be the ones with the highest akhlaq highest levels of respect and manners Those are the closest ones in, in place, physically, next to the Prophet Sallallahu in Jannah. And the Prophet Sallallahu is in the highest rank of Jannah. So if you, can be, if you want to be as close as, as you can to him, you have to have very high level of akhlaq and manners. SubhanAllah, Al-Qa'qa is one of the salaf and the scholars, he was asked. They told him, Ya Imam, قُلْ لَنَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ شَيْئًا يُشَوِّقُنَا إِلَيْهَا Tell us something about heaven, about paradise, that will really motivate us and make us really want to go to Jannah. Now subhanAllah, if someone would ask you this question, you would tell him, you know, many ahadith, and you have this and you have this and you have that. But he gave him one word, قَالَ فِيهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ That heaven has the Prophet ﷺ. That should be enough motivation for you to try 
on an everyday basis to have that goal to be next to the Prophet ﷺ. Tayyib, the akhlaq Aisha ta'ala anha, when she was asked about the Prophet's akhlaq and how he was, قالت, kana Quran yamshi. He was a walking Quran. What should imagine? This Quran is filled with adab and manners and respect and everything else that you can possibly think about. It is a way of life. It teaches us how to perfect our life if we follow it in the same exact way that we are told to follow it. And this man, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was a walking example of everything in the Quran. And for you and I, for example, we may follow some portions of the Quran, the things that we want and what we like. But he asked Salaam, what if he can choose? He would follow the whole entire Quran as it is. For the point that I want to talk about, as I mentioned, is a hadith. And this hadith that made me think about it was an incident that happened in this masjid. The Sahaba used to go to the Prophet and they would tell me, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I want to talk to you about this individual, or that individual, or that person, or that person. Sometimes it's really to seek advice, and sometimes there are people that just have that desire of finding something to talk about, and if there's nothing to talk about but a certain individual, brother or sister, they will talk about it. And the Prophet ﷺ responds to this, to these companions would tell them, this would be early in the morning, he would tell them, لا تحدثوني عن أصحابي شيئا فإني أحب أن أخرج إلى أصحابي وأنا سليم صدق. Look at this akhlaq for a second. He would tell the companions, please just stop right here and don't tell me anything about my companions, my friends. Why? Why don't you want to hear about these people? قَالَ فَإِنِّي أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَخْرُجَ إِلَىٰ أَصْحَابِي وَأَنَا سَلِيمَ الصُّحْبِ I want to go out and meet them and see them the same way I've seen them yesterday, the day before, in the last few years. I don't want what you may tell me possibly change my view of that individual. And I'm going to, the same way I asked the brothers in Isha a few days ago, I'm going to ask everyone sitting here today, a lot more people. How many times, please, how many times has someone told you something about another person that you that really shocked you? And you without verifying or seeing it yourself, you your perception and your view of that person changed. How many people have we lost in our lives, friends and family members, because of things that people told us? And we end up regretting it later on. Allah says, Ya yu al-lidheena amin wa yuhu baleed, in jaa'akum fa'asiqun binabari. If someone were to come to you with any type of story, qala fatabayyinu. And in another riwayah or qira'ah, because we have different qira'ah in the Qur'an, fatathabbatu, verify deeply about this information. أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصفحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين. So that you might, you might accuse or yes, accuse that person or slander that person out of ignorance, and you end up regretting it someday. Now it's one level of iman to verify. The Prophet of Quran is asking to verify, and there's a higher level. Of not even verifying, you know what? I'm not gonna verify, I'm gonna continue seeing him the same way or her the same way, and if it ever happens, I will deal with it when it happens. A higher level than that is if you ever see it happen from him or her, what do we do? First thing you do is give that person the highest level of benefit of the doubt, personal money. And subhanAllah, there's a brother sitting with us here today, may Allah reward him, he knows who he is. After I mentioned this incident last week or two days ago, I honestly, yeah, I mean, for a second, I didn't have that personal love, that benefit of doubt in my heart. Until he reminded me of a point that I was completely ignorant about. 
What is this incident that I keep mentioning? There was a brother a few, maybe two weeks ago, a very close brother of mine, in the message that prayed with us, two weeks ago, he's been telling me before he, that he wants to bring me a thobe, a thobe as a gift. And two weeks ago, he brought he me this thobe. I see him, the love was very nice, but it was extremely long. So I told him, you know, inshallah, I'll try to go find a tailor to cut it for me and make it short, and I'll wear it, inshallah. Because he told me, you know, if you don't mind, can you wear it tomorrow? And I said, well, let me get it shortened first and I'll take care of it and I'll wear it. So I take the bag and I put it right on top of that safe over there. So it's between Makkah, like maybe 15, 20 minutes before I Isha prayer. I come and lead the Isha prayer and give the class and after the class, I'm talking to saints and other people here and there. And I'm about to, one of the last people to leave the message that night. And what happens? I walk towards the door, give my sandals, look on top of the safe, and what happened? The is not there. So the first thing that crossed my mind was what? Okay, maybe he took it to go cut it for me and bring it back looking nice and short to my size. I let it go and I left. Two days later I beat him again, brother, you know, did, did you take the dope? He said, no, I didn't. I was like, well, I'm truly sorry to say this, but I left it at the safe, believing that it's a safe place, and somebody took it. Now at that point, if you see right next to that, that screen, that TV right there, right next to it is a camera, facing the door directly. I could have simply walked in the office, rewinded the video to see who took it. And he himself told me that. He said, well, there's cameras, go take the cameras. And I was, to be honest, for a, for a little bit, I was eager to know who did it. Not not for any reason. Wallahi, and I told the brothers, I own, alhamdulillah, 36 thobes like this in my house. This is my uniform on a day-to-day basis. So Allah, an extra thobe or two will not matter at all. But I just wanted to know who this person was and why. And I, as, as I was walking and trying to go and see the video, I automatically remember that hadith. You know that the hadith may not necessarily be the individual telling you what happened. The camera is the most proof, the most trusted proof that will never lie to you. But I told the camera, don't show me someone that I love and see every single day at a Shah prayer that I will have to look at him differently. But this is the first portion of the story, right? Now, the brother may Allah bless him who came and talked to me after the Isha, made a very important point that Krishna learned, the benefit of the doubt. He told me, Shaykh, you know, it's been the, the, the nature of the masjid, it's been, in, the, in the masjid, it's been common and known that anyone who's donating something will leave it on top of the safe on the bench, the couch in the back. And that's true, I did notice that a lot of times, you know, food, clothing, you know, supplies, whatever. So maybe that person thought it was a donation, he took it. I want you to imagine, subhanAllah, I am an imam, right? But I'm a human being at the end. Sometimes I get the feeling to have the same thing that every normal person goes through. I'm pretty sure if that brother did not tell me and remind me of that, because like I said, I knew it, and I see it happen, but just that thought of that person constantly taking it because he thought it was a donation, that was no thought that did not cross my mind. And afterwards, subhanAllah, imagine if I would have followed my own desire, over a thumb, piece of cloth, seeing who this person was, and then every single day, I may not, and I'm pretty sure, positive that I would not have confronted him. But I'm also pretty sure that my salam problem towards him would probably change. It would be with a less of a smile, or very quick, something, it's human nature. SubhanAllah, the Prophet taught us these akhlaq. And as I said in the beginning, how many people have we lost in our lives because of Qeed al He said, she said, he did, he did. How many? How many relations have we lost and regret that we lost because of things that we've heard from outsiders? If he's a true brother to you and you've heard or seen something from that individual, don't let anybody's words affect that relationship whatsoever. If you so feel the need to go verify, 
and you go and verify it, and you see it, please, before anything, try to think or come up in your mind with the most possible excuse that you can give that person. The best, yani, the least excuse that you can give that person which fits anybody. You know how sometimes you can give this individual an excuse but it does not fit this individual. Or you can give this person the benefit of the doubt but in this specific case, that person just doesn't fit. But an excuse that fits every single human being is the fact that we are humans and we get weak sometimes. You may have a specific sin that you do that nobody knows about and you do it out of weakness. He may have that sin or that wrong that he does out of weakness. That's the bottom line. Know that you're not perfect. And if you're not perfect and nobody else around you is perfect, why sit there and blame everybody for what they do? Yes, there are mistakes that are intolerable and that are unacceptable. And when that happens, you still don't cut people off. Yahya the Prophet ﷺ, companion would come to him and say, Ya Rasulullah, I committed zina, adultery, stole me to death. And the Prophet ﷺ would walk away and give them the benefit of the doubt. He would tell them, Are you insane? Are you sure you're mentally Probably is stable. Like who would do such a thing and come and ask for the death penalty? And he would walk away and the man would come again, Ya Rasulullah, I am telling you I committed zina. Second time. And the Prophet would turn away. And he would repeat, Adahal Ahlu. And would tell him, walk away. Why? Out of concern for that person. The third time, the same thing, the fourth time. And Allah says in the Quran, if there is no four witnesses that witness the, the actual act, then the person himself will testify four times upon himself that he did it. <laughs> SubhanAllah. And there was a man that used to come and drink alcohol every single time they would bring him to the Prophet and the Prophet would whip him 40 times. They had to come. And one day the companion said, ma akta, ma yuta bihada. How many times are we going to see the same person brought in and being whipped 40 times? Allah. May Allah curse him. And the Prophet got upset and said, Wallahi, innahu rajulun yuhibbu Allahu wa rasulun. This person, he loves Allah his messenger. What does that tell you when he says that? That this person is a believer. He loves Allah and his messenger. He's a good person overall. So don't curse him or wish bad upon him. He's just weak in that specific aspect, that specific sin of drinking. But he's not wrong in anything else. So please, give him a break. If we had that perception, that mentality in our life, Allah, your entire lifestyle and treating people would change completely. Completely. So, if Adam Jabal, when he was leaving to Yemen, when the Prophet sent him to Yemen, and it was the very last time he was going to see the Prophet. And he goes to the Prophet, the Prophet of Allah, give me advice on Sahih. Awsin Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet told him, Ittaqi Allah Hikma Kunt, wa atbi' al sayyat al hasana la tamfuha, wa khaliqi al nasa bi khuluq al hasana. Fear Allah wherever you are. And every time you commit a sin, repent from that sin. And treat people with good akhlaq. SubhanAllah, because that is a very important aspect in our life. Sometimes, you may think, and a lot of people have this mentality of, you know, I'm this independent person, if these people come in my life or leave, it doesn't affect me in any way or form, I don't really care. You know, these people are, are fake, they're not real people, they're not this. And they live this, this mentality, yes, it's probably a character, you know, a, an attribute of strength, but whether you like it or not, you live on earth with these people. And these individuals, you will see them every single day. And you are obligated to deal with them and treat them. How do we treat them? With the greatest of our akhlaq.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى منشن استغاثة سورة الحجرات يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إذن ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا يحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرتموه until the end of the ayah سبحان الله الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us first that do not give people the worst of the doubts don't think negatively about anyone no matter what you see no matter what you hear no matter what you know don't think negatively of anyone. First, start out with giving them the benefit of the doubt. I mentioned the stages Allah puts the ayat of the Quran subhanAllah in a very amazing way. Allah starts it by saying in the ayat before it, in If you get any false or any rumors from anyone before believing it, verify first. It's the first step. Then says, don't give, think about them in a negative way. Then says, don't spy on them. And then says, don't backbite them. Look at those stages, Talmud. This is what naturally happens. Is that Allah is that we human beings, we first get the rumor. We sometimes believe it, sometimes don't. Which leads us to what? You first start giving that person the worst of the doubts. You start thinking of them differently. Because you heard those rumors. You think of them differently. And afterwards, if you were to ever see them or know where they are, you start spying on them. And not necessarily like spy with actual kids. But you try to to go around and ask questions, not with a good intention. But then Allah says, do not spy on them. And after you find what you find, people end up in going and they start backbiting and gossiping about that person. A lot of people, they have this wrong understanding of the term riba, backbiting. They think that backbiting is saying something that is not true about this person. No, that's not it. That's fasuq, that's fisk. And buhdan. Riba, the Prophet defines it as dhikruka akhaq bima yakrah. He tells us that backbiting is an attribute that your brother has, something bad that he has. And he does not like to be described that way. And you still say it. So don't think because you heard the rumor, you went and verified or spied, you started backbiting this person. Don't think that when you go and talk to people about this person, hey, you know, this person turns out to be one, two, three, and four. That makes it okay for you, it's right, and it's, it's permissible because it's true. No, it's not true, it's still haram. It's still haram in the same way that you want when, when or if someone finds out something about you that you would want that individual to protect you and conceal you, then do the same for others. Yaqeen, the most serious hadith that you can hear about this topic is the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَا تَتَبَّعُوا عَوْرَاتِ النَّاسِ don't try to follow the shortcomings of people. We try to always, you know, follow it and then talk about it and try to embarrass people. That don't spend your life trying to expose people. And talk about them. It says, therefore, he who lives his life doing that, indeed will come a day where Allah will expose your sins, even if you are in the middle of your house where no one is there at that moment, some way, somehow, you will be exposed. SubhanAllah, think about these things and treat others the way you want to be treated and know that. Like I mentioned, the same, you know, they have their shortcomings, you have yours, they may not be the same, but the same that you want to hide yours, hide theirs for them. And what does Prophet say? Man sadara, akhi, or aib, akhi, sadara, Allah, awrta, yawm, qiyamah, that whoever 
conceals and protects his brother's shortcomings, Allah will protect him on the end. When everybody is watching and will see all of your mistakes. If I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to have that level of ikhlaq and to deal with people in this aspect, then let's please try this from today. From today, have the strength and the courage that when anybody comes to talk to you about someone else, remember today's school, but tell him, brother, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to look at them differently. I don't want to, change them, you know, have to think about them anyway. Please, let's let it go. There's so many different topics you can talk about. Like I said, it takes a lot of courage. Sometimes you end up, you don't have the strength to say it. And you end up being quiet without necessarily participating in the conversation. Because you may respect that person or you may not want to lose the friendship. Also, remember a third hadith. Very scary hadith, Prophet says, that the worst of the people is the one that sees his brother doing wrong and does not forbid that wrong out of fear of losing that friendship. Wallahi. And go very fast if you want to. Out of fear of losing that friendship. So sometimes you may sit there and you're afraid of losing that friendship or that respect or whatever the case may be. And you sit quiet. Just to let you know you being in that conversation or participating or not, if you don't forbid that evil or you stop that person, you will find the same exact level of sin. Same exact level. جعل الله وياكم المتقين إن الله ملك وصل على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم وتسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أنت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اجعل عملنا كله في رضاك وهنينا برحمتك عمن سواك وعمن قلوبنا بتقواك واجعلنا نخشاك حتى نراك إلى يوم قال اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم مشهوروك على نعمه يذكركم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعرف تصنعون